I've got a little tongue twister for you guys. Purple paper people. Purple paper people, purple. Jeez. Try saying that five times fast. But today we're talking about paper people purple aquarium plants. Let's get started. So, this right here is my immersed aquarium plant grow out system. So let's get a closer look. So I guess I should talk a little bit about this setup because you guys have never seen it before. But basically there's a piece of egg crate under here and then this is balanced on a box which holds up the egg crate. And then I have a bunch of little cups that I've cut down and filled with aqua soil. And uh, I basically fill this thing half up and grow a bunch of aquarium plants in here. So today's vlog is focusing on purple plants and one's not here yet, but this one I've had for a little bit and this is Bacopa salzmani and it's a super interesting plant right here. It's being grown immersed, so not submerged in water and you can see it's pretty green, but this plant can get a super stunning purple. I'll post up some images right here, but you can see how crazy this stuff could end up looking. So today we're going to be taking the Bacopa salzmani as well as another plant in here, Ludwigia inclinata cuba. This is a plant I have tried three times and failed every single time, but this will be the fourth and hopefully it goes well. This is going to be going into my 24 gallon tank, which is my most high octane tank setup to this date. It's got the best lights I've ever had, best CO2 I've ever had. So hopefully these plants can do well. If they don't, it's uh, not the equipment, it's me, I guess. So I'll be trimming these up and moving them into those tanks. And I got these plants, I forgot to mention, from the Winnipeg plant guy, but they are grown immersed. So I wanted to give them some time to transition after shipping. So I moved them into here where they'd be nice and humid and have time to kind of bounce back from that shipping. Now, before I do all that, I have to do my weekly maintenance on this setup. What I do every week is I do a water change where I drain out all of the water in here and then fill it back up with fresh water and then I just add four pumps of Nylock Cheese Thrive. And this is just an all-in-one fertilizer that works well for me. And especially this setup because algae isn't something I really have to worry about it. So I just add a ton of fertilizers in here and all the plants do great, no deficiencies or anything. But yeah, let's go do that. I'm not gonna show that because this tank's just a pain to work on, but I will show me planting the plants in the 24 gallon.
So yesterday we got another purple plantain to go with this Bacopa Salzmoni. And this is a really rare one. This is Bucephalandra Ghost 2011. This is a super interesting plant. In a recent TikTok I made, I mentioned how it was extinct in the wild and got accused of being a poacher. So let's talk about that a little bit. Bucephalandra Ghost 2011 likely comes from islands on the outskirts of Borneo. And because of this, genetics and evolution work a bit differently over on islands. When islands are isolated, there's no new genetics coming in and plants and animals can adjust specifically to what the island has to offer. And because of this, Bucephalandra Ghost 2011 likely became its own new species on the specific island. And because of that, there was probably very little of it and it was easily over harvested. So the chances that Bucephalandra ghost is completely extinct in the wild is very high. But that's not too bad because aquarists have been keeping this plant since 2011 and growing it out and sustainably farming it so other aquarists can keep it in their aquariums as well. The aquarium hobby is actually beneficial and harmful to the environment at the same time. If we ever found out where this plant initially came from, we could start tissue culturing it and growing out a ton, making millions of these plants and reintroducing them to their natural habitat. We've done this in the past with fish, or tried to unfortunately. White cloud mountain minnows went completely extinct in the wild way back, and we tried to reintroduce white cloud mountain minnows because they were still commercially available in our hobby, but unfortunately with too much habitat loss, I don't think it worked out. I haven't updated myself on the study, but that's just an example. The goal with my Ghost 2011 will be to grow it out and sell it in the future. Now, a lot of other views are still available in the wild, and because of that, they're continued to be harvested and sold in our hobby occasionally. Companies like Tropica have done a great job at starting sustainable farming, but only for a couple species. So people still try to get that rarer stuff through importing it from Indonesia, which has been harvested from the wild. If you're gonna ever buy Bucephalandra, check where it's coming from. If it's from me, it's grown in my tanks. Other places will import it from growers from across the world who just set it up in big tubs and grow it in areas close to its natural habitat, but they do it sustainably. Just try to make sure you're not getting it from a seller who's just plucking this stuff from patches in his backyard. So now that I'm done my little Bucephalandra spiel, let's continue. Right now I'm gonna be working on some fertilizer. On all my tanks I use Tropica Premium Nutrition, but it doesn't come with any phosphates, which is a bit of a problem. This will cause a bit of green spot, green dust algae, basically any kind of green algaes in your aquariums. So what I'm gonna be doing is making up a phosphate mixture with, where is it? Here we go, right behind me. Uh, you're not gonna be able to read the label, but this is monopotassium phosphate. So it's a salt that contains phosphate. So I'm gonna be mixing some up and teaching you guys how to do it. To make this mixture, we're gonna be using rotalabutterfly.com. Here you can go to the nutrient calculator, which basically shows you how to make these mixtures. You type in your aquarium size. I'm just gonna do 10 gallons and make a mixture I can use on multiple different tanks. And then I'm gonna select the DIY option. I'm gonna find monopotassium phosphate, it's not that one, it's the other one, very close. And I'm going to select how big my container is, as well as the dose size, which is just two milliliters. And then I'm gonna do the estimative index. This is gonna add 1.3 parts per million of phosphate, but there's a bunch of different methods you can choose. You can even choose to choose how much phosphates you wanna to add to your tank as well. And there you can see how much I need to add. I'm just gonna be measuring this out in teaspoons and I'm just gonna be mixing this up in a water bottle with plain old tap water. So I got a little lazy, didn't show the making of the phosphate mixture, but that's because it's just pretty easy. All I do is weigh out the mass I need of phosphates. I usually just use teaspoons, kind of a guesstimate, and then I just add it to regular tap water, and then that's it, shake it up and start adding it to the tanks. So let's talk a little bit more about purple plants. In this video, you saw Bucephalandra Ghost 2011, as well as Bacopa Salzmani. I also have Purple Night Sword, which I found is the easiest of the three, and I'm even growing it, sorry, in, uh, in low-tech conditions in the tank behind me. It's probably the easiest of the bunch. But let's talk about how these plants get purple to begin with. 
The purpling of plants is caused by a pigmentation molecule called anthocyanin. Now there's not much known about how we can increase the expression of this to get better colored plants, but they do know a little bit about it and the roles it plays in things like fruits ripening, which leads to that purple, orange, red, or even blue colors as well. Now I don't know exactly how to get this anthocyanin molecule to express to lead to deeper purples, but I do know that it seems that strong light and good CO2 make this more expressive in your plants, leading to darker purples and blues if, uh, if it has those specific pigmentation molecules as well. If you guys want daily updates on what I'm doing with my fish tanks, make sure to check me out on TikTok and Instagram where I post every single day and update you guys on what's going on in the fish room. Anyways guys, thank you guys so much for watching. This is Calum's Fish Tanks. Peace.